born in Karamojong, the tribe of herders reside in the remote northeast part of Uganda. Karamoja region borders with Kenya and South Sudan. This dry and exhausted piece of land doesn't resemble any other part of Uganda. Even within the country, it is perceived as marginalized, isolated, dangerous and violent territory. Home to around 370,000 Karamojong people, Karamoja suffers from the highest poverty rate in Uganda and from the constant droughts. The scarcity of the rainfall, which comes sporadically between June and October, dictates the poor half-nomadic lifestyle of Karamojong. People here have limited access to clean water, food and medicine. Water collection is a primary task for the Karamojong women. To manage it, they usually wake up at 4 a.m. before it is too hot, walk for miles to reach the streamlet and come back carrying the 20-liter jerry cans on their heads. Since the 1960s, the Ugandan government has attempted to implement the Western style of education in Karamoja. However, the Karamojong community, where child labor plays a major role, has to pay too high a price for educating their children. Having a different set of values, traditions and beliefs, Karamojong do not see the value of education as it contradicts their traditional lifestyle. Most parents have negative attitudes towards education. The government is trying to force them to bring children to school. Even though they bring children to school, most of them drop out. So by the time they reach P7, find out that they are only three children in P7. Again, three from P1, there are very many. And most of them drop out. Because also, boys drop out because they go for uh, rearing animals. Some children also drop out because of anger in the school, especially during the rainy season. They go to work in others' garden to look for food. My name is Bobby Romeri Emmanuel. I am 14 years. I'm studying P7. I like mathematics and science. The reason why I like them, I want to be a doctor in future. And then a bank manager. I like, I like mathematics and science. I want to become a, a, a surgeon and a, and a bank manager. Although Karamojong live in primitive conditions and surviving is a major issue of their daily life, the tradition of dancing is deeply rooted in their culture. Karamojong people are indeed energetic, positive and hospitable, despite of being considered violent and aggressive. Oh, that's what I'm
We start burning charcoal of our feet. We burn charcoal, cutting firewood, taking to the center to see. I married because of the suffering of my mom. I saw that that man can help us. But the man went away when I get pregnant. She left me when I was like three months. I stayed with my mom when I was cutting fire taking to the same person. When I produced, I went back for charcoal again to survive with my son. No father, no what, nobody to help me, but I was there with my son. I say like 300. Or oh, 500 sometimes. I'll buy so. Tomorrow again I start like that. From the village here, our best life is burning charcoal. When no you dig, when you dig, the rain comes only once. Now for us, we are total orphan. The mom doesn't have father, mother, and now mom, we have remained with only our mom. He was the only child. Hey. Mm. Now nothing is going to do. Until recent years, Karamojong men were wearing the AK-47s to protect their cattle against tribes from Kenya and Sudan, but also to use for cattle raiding. The region began to change since 2011, when the last of several disarmament efforts was held by the Ugandan militaries. So I've been a raider a long time ago. I could raid and kill an early, but I could sacrifice myself, I'm sorry, just because of stealing cows and raiding an early. I talk right now as I'm trying. I'm for peace, not again, more raids. <laughs> They are very happy to see you people. Eh? You see us together, they are happy. Eh? Yeah, I'm not